The report that was made last November 17th of a UFO spotted over Alaska attracted special attention. This sighting was made by an airline pilot with 29 years of experience. The crew claims that while it was flying over Alaska last November, it was followed for 400 miles by strange white, yellow, and amber lights. Of the thousands of reported pilot encounters with the UFOs around the world, few are more harrowing than the episode on the 17th of November, 1986, involving Japanese Airlines Flight 1628, high above the Alaskan tundra. Regarding uh, uh, airline cases uh, in, uh, in America, the GL is very interesting because you have multiple witnesses. It was a cargo aircraft and the pilots uh, observed an object that seemed to be tracking along with their aircraft. It involved an investigation by the FAA. This is an official government investigation of uh, the sighting itself. The events of that night were captured on tape. Center 1628 heavy military radar advises they are picking up an intermittent primary target behind you. In trail, in trail, I say again. The Boeing 747 cargo jet was on a routine flight from Paris to Tokyo, cruising at 600 miles per hour at an altitude of 35,000 feet. It was headed towards Anchorage, Alaska, to refuel. Suddenly, at 5.11 p.m., Captain Kenju Terauchi, a pilot with 29 years flight experience, saw three large, fast-moving, unidentified objects 2,000 feet below. The largest object was described by Captain Terauchi as resembling a shelled walnut. Captain Terauchi said that the main craft was twice the size of an American aircraft carrier. Co pilot said it was as solid there as if you were seeing an oncoming jet with its lights on, except it wasn't an oncoming jet. 747 was nothing compared to this uh, big flying saucer. After several minutes of observing the UFOs, the pilots realized that the objects were now matching their speed, 600 miles an hour, and tracking them. The captain reported that the objects began, quote, making moves that are impossible for any man-made aircraft to perform. Then, without warning, two of the smaller craft suddenly rose and shot directly in front of the pilot's window. The objects came so close to the aeroplane that Captain Terauchi recalled that the intense glow made his face feel warm. All of a sudden they appear and they're traveling right in front of the aircraft. And they were sort of wobbling back and forth as they moved. They seemed to be only a, th a thousand, maybe two thousand feet in front of the aircraft and traveling at six hundred and some miles an hour. At that very moment, their radio link to Anchorage went dead, leaving the aircraft flying blind. A horrifying catastrophe was seconds away when the UFOs rose and veered left. In his official FAA report, Captain Terauchi said we had to get away from that object. Moments later, an urgent message came in from Elmendorf Air Force Base. The unidentified object had now appeared on their radar. Yeah, there's one there's two again. We have confirmed there is a flight size of two around your 1550 squad. One primary return only. Okay, where is he following him? It looks like he is, yes. Okay, stand by. The phrase flight size of two indicated that JAL 1628 had uninvited guests, possibly with hostile intentions. Immediately after this confirmation, the FAA requested that the Air Force scramble jets. Do you have anybody to scramble up there, or do you want to do that? Well, we're going to talk to your liaison officer about that. It's starting to concern of uh, Japan Airlines taking the 360 now, and it's still falling. Yeah, okay, we're going to we'll call the military desk on this. Although the military desk took no action, JAL 1628 landed safely in Anchorage at 6.20 p.m. Extensive media coverage around the world has helped make this incident one of the most widely reported UFO cases in history. The JAL case continues to inspire debate about the nature and intent of the objects that tracked the 747. To this day, it remains a mystery. The Japan Airlines 747 
had a saucer go around it. The papers mysteriously disappeared from the FAA office. The 30th of January, 1987. Only two months after the JAL report, a similar UFO event took place in Alaskan skies. But this one involved the US military. A US Air Force KC-135, flying from Elmendorf Air Base in Anchorage to Eielson Air Force Base near Fairbanks, reported a chilling UFO-related incident at 20,000 feet. The US Force, uh, around 1 o'clock, uh, can't really tell the distance, uh, seems to be about low altitude. Actor 2-9, uh, negative, I have no uh, traffic in your 1 o'clock. The pilots reported that the object was strikingly similar to the UFO seen by the JAL flight, a massive, disc-shaped, noiseless object larger than an aircraft carrier. Seconds later, Anchorage Air Traffic Control asked whether the KC-135 still had the object in sight. The pilot replied yes, and added that the object was now only 40 feet from his aircraft. The recent incident involving JAL Flight 1628 even came up in their cockpit recording. Thirty minutes later, the Anchorage control tower passed on a message from the local FAA office. Anchor uh, 29, the quality assurance staff at the Anchorage Center here requests you give them a call after you land at Eielson. Yeah, is it concerning the uh, object we're looking at? Affirmative, sir. I think pilots make especially good UFO witnesses. They know what's normal in the sky and what isn't. Uh, they've seen all different kinds of airplanes routinely. When a pilot reports a UFO, there's a better than average chance that that's what it was. The 31st of January, 1987. Less than 24 hours after the KC-135 encounter, yet another UFO-related incident occurred in the skies above Alaska. The pilots aboard Alaska Airlines Flight 53 witnessed enormous, bright, disc-like objects tracking their aeroplane. Ground control stated that no object was visible on radar, but it was the speed of the UFO craft that alarmed the pilots. They had just underneath our radar picked up the blip. He's moving about a mile a second. He's pull out straight ahead of us and just disappear. Man, he was there and then he was gone. If you're a pilot and you report a UFO sighting to the FAA, you might as well turn in your license the next day. The FAA, the military, even civilian authorities don't want to know about UFOs.